All right, here we are with part two, and we're being introduced to a new random variable called the binomial random variable. It'll be familiar to your ear if you've had that in math class or statistics, probability in statistics in another, embedded in another math class, so it may be familiar to you. There are four things that make this a random variable, and what we're going to do is write down the four, discuss them, and then I'll give you a scenario as you tell me whether it's a binomial or not. All right, the first thing is, are both of them, are there two results? In other words, the, this binomial, this random variable, remember, is a, it involves a chance process. Are there two results? We're going to call them success and failure. Is it possible to see this chance event in the light of two outcomes? Success and fa failure. It's not truly, it doesn't have to be like a tails might be your success and heads your failure. Or if you get an even number, that is your success on a roll of a die and everything else in failure. So is, are there somehow that you can define two results? All right, sometimes, um, well, we'll go ahead and add the later. Are the two events, are the events independent? When you repeat the events in this random variable, are the events independent of one another? Are the number of trials in the event fixed? The number of trials are fixed. And lastly, is the probability of the success for each event the same? The probability for success for each event or each repetition, each event is the same. So if you have all these, you have a binomial random variable. There's a way to memorize those. And see if I have a picture. Five minutes. Um, can anyone tell me what this is? This is our old socks. What's this? Allie, what's that look like to you? Um, I don't know. Wrong. What about you? What are these? Trash cans. Uh, no. What is this? Uh, clothing bins? Oh, he said the word. Not clothing, but? Bins. 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 Oh, okay. I didn't think like anyone like would get it. Alright, so. Oh, just, you were just looking I for the word bins. I said recycling bins. I didn't I get to you yet. Yeah, I didn't hear. Was I was going, going around, around the room. I didn't, I was like, you, you, asked, you said for the socks. I was like, do you want me to describe the shape of them? <laughs> socks. Remember how we used socks earlier? So now we have bins. So that is actually in your book. It's not just me, everyone. So B means binary. Binary is a word that means two. So when you see the B, you think binary. There has to be two results. I is independent. N is number of trials fixed. I'll say number fixed. And S, how they get S out of that? Success is same. Same. Success, same, same probability for successes. I'm not sure about that last one, but they do use left. They do use S. All right, bins. So that's supposed to help you. That word in that picture there. The bins are supposed to help you remember what a binomial random variable is. So, I will give you a scenario, and you tell me whether you think it is a random, a binomial, or it is not a binomial. All right, the first one we're going to discuss is, um, let's just do the one that you have there on your paper. So, let's look at that on your handout. The first one, it says... Part A, do you see where, where I am? Here are three scenarios involving chance behavior. In each case, determine whether the given random variable has a binomial distribution. 
All right, so in part A, Julia, would you read that for us? Sure. Genetics say that children receive genes from each of their parents independently. Each child with a particular pair of genes is the probability 0.25 of the number of blood. Children. Okay, the number of children with type That's it? For A? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, look over your bins and see if you think that that meets the requirements to be a binomial random variable. See what you think there. Ms. Pat, I'll show them the thing. So what we have is certain parents, we know from their genetic makeup that their probability of them having a type O blood offspring is 0.25, and that's every time. So suppose these, these parents have five children, let X, X be the number of children with type O blood. So the X might be zero, it might be one, it might be two, it might be three, it might be four, it might be all five. So that's the random variable that we're thinking about. So, so let's go down the list. Independent means independent. Is of it each a other, binary not situation? Allie, do you think it's binary? Yes. Yeah, it's either they are O or they aren't. So do you see what that means by binary? Can you define this problem as a success and a failure? Well, it would be kind of so we're going to say an O type O is a success. So it passes. Check it off. Are they independent of one another? It doesn't say, it does say, it does say independent. So that's probably not true, but I'm going to say it is. Maybe it is. I don't know my genetics well enough to say, but they said it was independent. Is the number of trials fixed? Yes. Well, how many, Allie? Five children. They're not saying we're going to have children until we have a type O. It's not like that. They're saying we're having five. So the total is fixed. Is there the same probability for each birth to have the, have a type O child? Mm -hmm. It is 0.25 for each birth, so it is the same. So, binary? Indeed. All right. All right, Elena reads uh, part B. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. There's no assignment tonight. Thank so, you. So we will pick this up on, for, on Monday and continue our fascinating discussion on the binary. Oh, random yay. Variable. Oh, I Don't forget it. what bins means. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Oh, now I have to carry two rings in my bowl. Yeah. Um, you can go make two trips.